Senator Leahy. Senator Cornyn. Ms. Schreier, sh sh pronounce your last name for me. Schreier? Schreier. Schreier, thank you. I know uh, that you are a journalist by, uh, by profession, um, but I am curious how you were drawn into this discussion. I know you've written a book on the topic. Uh, could you describe a little bit about what uh, brought you into this topic? Yes, Senator. A reader wrote to me, and she told me that her daughter, um, who had always, who had never shown any signs of gender dysphoria in her youth, um, but nonetheless had other mental health pro uh, she had mental health problems, she had um, anxiety and depression and, so, and some other problems, um, but, but not, she never had anything like gender dysphoria. Uh, nonetheless, she went off to college and with a group of girlfriends, they all decided within a short period of time they were transgender. She told me that there was a sudden spike in adolescent girls deciding they were tr transgender, often under peer and social media influence. And she told me that this was occurring all across the West and no one wanted to report on it. And I tried to find an investigative journalist who would take this up. And um, I sent all the contacts to, to um, an investigative journalist. And when I realized no one else wanted to take this up, um, I wrote a first piece about it for the Wall Street Journal. Ms. Hassan, um, I'm curious about the impact of the so-called Equality Act on the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, which is a bipartisan piece of legislation signed into law by President Clinton. Uh, RIFRA, as it's sometimes called, requires the courts to strike a sensible balance between religious liberty and competing prior government interests. What it doesn't say is that religious liberties always win. In fact, a lot of the time courts find that the government interest outweighs the religious objection under a balancing test. In your view, how does the uh, so-called Equality Act uh, change the Religious Freedom Restoration Act? That question's for Ms. Hassan. I know in the age of Zoom, sometimes we are all technologically challenged. Let me go on to another question and maybe she can uh, join us, rejoin us. What I'm trying to figure out, Ms. Shire, again, you know, I'm, I'm looking at things from battered women's shelters to the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. I believe you've mentioned Title IX, certainly um, <laughs> Senator Hyde Smith did. Um, as a father of two daughters, I, I thought it, I think, still think it's important for young girls to get the confidence and physical conditioning and the, and the full ability to participate in sports um, under Title IX. Then I think about faith-based organizations provide services like foster care, uh, religious colleges and universities. We have major universities founded by relig uh, re religious um, faiths. Uh, adoption agencies. Am I r wrong to be concerned about the uh, Equality Act having a negative impact on each of those institutions and and uh, and uh, current uh, laws? Well, um, you know, just the the the. I don't think you're wrong, Senator. Um, you know, the plain text of the act exempts the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. Yes. It, it, I believe it abrogates it. It wouldn't apply, but um, to create a religious exemption. But um, you know, obviously, Ms. Hassan was here to speak about that. Um, as as for uh, female athletes, um, I, I I do think it's worth noting that they are the only ones asked to sacrifice here um, for the sake of the Equality Act. The the sacrifice is entirely on the shoulders of women and girls. Men men have no comparable sacrifice when, when um, a biological female um, enters their spaces or where an, a biological female, however she identifies, competes with them in sports. It doesn't threaten their spaces, it doesn't threaten their safety, and it doesn't threaten their opportunities. Thanks. Ms. Hassan, are you still with us? I am, oh. I am, I hope you're here. 
Could you talk about uh, the impact of the so-called Equality Act, which I think would probably be better entitled the Preferential Treatment Act than the Equality Act, uh, but its impact on the Religious Freedom Restoration Act? Yes, it's written specifically into the Equality Act that the Religious Freedom Restoration Act is not going to be available as a defense or as a source of a claim. And so when we think about uh, the states as sort of the laboratories of, of how these kinds of um, protections for sexual orientation and gender identity work out, we've seen numerous cases brought that have relied on the protections of the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. So the people of faith can live their beliefs out in the public square. And so with this Equality Act, by stripping those protections, it puts the thumb on the scale against people of faith. The other thing that the that uh, the Equality Act does is that it limits or attempts to limit by uh, recourse to First Amendment claims by saying in the statute that this statute by definition uh, serves a compelling governmental interest and it is the least restrictive alternative. So again, it sort of tips the scale in a way to that says, frankly, to people of faith, you're not welcome. You're not welcome to serve. You're not welcome uh, to bring your faith into the public square. And that's, it's unnecessary. It's not, we can, we can protect the most vulnerable without telling people of faith that there's no, no place for them. How does it make you feel that uh, under the bill that it refers to marriage between a man and a woman as a sex stereotype? And uh, yes, I, I know stigmatizes the belief of hundreds of millions of Americans, including Catholics, evangelicals, Jews, Mormons, and Muslims. I noticed that, that that, that was listed as an example of a sex stereotype. And here, I would just uh, remind the committee and, and all Americans how Justice Kennedy spoke about this, that in the Obergefell decision, he talked about the um, honorable beliefs that people have held for centuries regarding marriage as between a man and a woman. And so people of faith need to have space to believe what they believe and to live that out authentically. And it shouldn't be disparaged and certainly not in, uh, in statutory language.